Can we watch the Wiz Life show like right now? Hey guys, how's it going? Fellow Wiz Lifers or fellow Christians. Anyway, I got something really, really good for you today. See, I like playing basketball. I really enjoy it. But I'm not really that good at it. And there's reason for it. See, we actually, every Monday night, we're starting to play basketball. So it's like pass, shoot, pass, shoot, block, you know, all that good stuff. Anyway, the thing is, I went for my first evening last night. I went to play basketball. It was today's Tuesday when I'm filming this. And anyway, I kind of really, really blew it. I was all, my shooting percentage was like, um, let's see, it was like... One out of 15, no, actually, I made two two shots. So it was like two out of 15 shots, something like that. It was horrible. It was like, like this. You know, see how horrible that is? It's horrible. Really horrible. Let, let me try that again. There we go. That was much better. So, anyway, we actually, like, last, last, this last year, every winter we play, the, play basketball every Monday night. There's two churches that come together to do this. And last winter, I wasn't really that good at it. And I was like, you know, you know what? I'm going to get better. I made my mind up. I'm going to get better. So I had this goal. I'm going to become better at shoot basketball. So what I did is I went and decided, you know what? The way for me to do that is to every day, see, I work at home usually. I work on my laptop. And so every day I was like, you know what? Why don't I just go out lunch break and play basketball here? shoot it and swish it, you know, just like I did, and every day do that for like a half hour to an hour. Just go out, play basketball, practice, and get practice up, you know, for when next winter rolls around, and it'd be all great. I mean, it'd be awesome. I mean, I probably, I probably last, last night, I probably would have done pretty good if I would have actually kept that up. See, I did it for like two weeks. I would actually go, come out almost every day for a lunch break, half hour or so, shoot around, dribble around, get better, work on my shots, work on driving, all this good stuff. And I was pretty good at it. I could make pretty much every shot around anywhere except for three-pointers. For some reason, I can't really shoot three-pointers. It's too far, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, I sucked last night. And I didn't like it. And again, if I would have kept doing this for more than two weeks, I would have probably got pretty good at it. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, okay, what in the world does this have to do with the Bible and living your life to the fullest? I mean, they didn't play basketball in the Bible, did they? I don't, I don't think they did. Now, if they would have, I was just thinking, you know, what would be the perfect team to play basketball with from the Bible? I, I, I always thought about, you know, Goliath. He was 10 feet tall. I mean, for crying out loud, he'd just stand at three point and be like, pshew, and swish the ball or something, you know. That'd be great. He'd be a good center, I tell you what. But then again, he got knocked down by a little guy named David. So probably have David on my team too. Because he was smart. He was a man after God's own heart. Also, just so you know. And he must, must have been pretty athletic. I mean, he was a fighter. and You know, in the Bible it talks about Saul has slain his thousand, David his ten thousands. So he was a fighter. He had to be pretty good to have slain so many people and yet still be alive and doing good. So he had to be pretty athletic. Probably be pretty good at basketball. And his son Solomon could be our coach or something because he's really smart. Had all the wisdom, you know. He could plan up all the, design all these plays and everything. That would be pretty great. Well, anyway, what, what I'm trying to bring out here, and the point that I'm going to make now, very good point, is this. When we as Christians, we, when we first come to God, when we first realize what God did for us, that He gave His only Son. Think about this. He gave His only Son to die on the, the cross, on that cross, for our sins, for my sin, for your sin. And because He did that, you know, back when you first realized that, it probably was pretty aws- awesome. And you were just like, you were just enveloped, engulfed in the love of God, and you would just you would have done anything for God in that moment. And as Christians, we, we every so often we have those times in life when it just knocks us on our feet, and we realize how awesome God is and how much who He is. I mean, He's the creator of everything, and yet He loves me, 
and that we can you we can love him we and that's that's the point I want to bring out to today you know a lot of the times as we go on in life as we experience those ups in life and they last for a week maybe two weeks and we're just in love we just love God we're in the time where we just love God but then they kind of fade away because we get caught up in life we get caught up in work in relationships in TV we get caught up in there's so many distractions that we get caught up in and that's exactly what Satan wants to happen he wants us to get caught up in all these stupid stuff that doesn't matter while the main thing that matters is love and more than just that it's love with God and that's what I want to challenge you with with today is to get back to your first love get back to the time those times when you were just it was just you and God you know what I'm talking about actually when when this video is over I want you to take a moment do this for me do this to, for yourself take a moment and think back about those times one of those times what you were feeling what you were thinking as as something awesome happened you know and you realized how powerful God is and how awesome he is and how much he loves you and how much you love him and get back to that time get back into the mental state of that time when you were just in awe of God so that's my challenge that's the wizard goal for this week is get back to your first love get back to what really mattered in life that's what really matters read 1 Corinthians 13 you'll notice that love is all that matters and love God is, you know, love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. is the is the biggest commandment in the Bible. It's the most important commandment in the Bible. So anyway, before I'm just in a second here, I'm going to switch to my laptop, and I'll go over the was I've goal again, and go over the verse that goes along with it and everything. But before I do that, I have a, have a couple things I want to say. See, last week, I was a little bit discouraged because I didn't get any comments on my video. And for someone to put up a video, take time to do it, not get any comments, and not knowing that people actually care about it, is a little bit discouraging. Now, I'm not going to give up, and I wouldn't do that because I like to keep at it. I mean, come on. So, I'm going to keep at it. But here's what I want you to do. If you want to get back to the time when you have really loved God, to that time, your first love, when you first realized how awesome God was, and if you want to get back to that, just simply comment with a smiley face. Put a smiley face in the comment section and let me know that you care. Let me know that you love God. And if you have something to, to say with this smiley face, say it. If you have a comment or if you have the bibl biblical joke or something, say it. So anyway, and again, if you have anything that you need to talk about that you about what you learned in this episode contact me and I'll, I'll help you out with it however I can so and well I'll switch to my laptop now okay guys it's whiz I've goal number four because this is the fourth episode and that is to get back to your first love and the verse or the verses that go along with that is Revelation 2 4 and 5 yet I hold this against you you have forsaken the love you had at first consider how far you have fallen Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will remove, come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. Now, as you can know, it's very, very important to get back to that place in time when, where God was holding you in his arms and you, you were just in love with God. And you need to always be at that time because if, it's not, if you don't go back to that time, then God will remove your lampstand. Now this verse from Revelation is actually taken to the seven churches. This was written to the seven churches. And this was one church. They were doing all this good stuff. They were all into religion and they were doing the right stuff. But they have forgotten about the first love. They had fallen from that first love. So that's my challenge is to keep up with your first love go back to your first love when you most love God and with that be sure to write down the was I've goal for this week and the verses that go along with that okay this is the part of the show where I sing 
Jesus loves me backwards. No, you know what? I'm going to give up before I even get started. So, actually, I'm just going to go ahead and share with you a biblical joke or quote of the week. So, today, we actually have a biblical quote. So, it's a little bit different. All the rest of the videos, we have biblical jokes. It's a biblical quote, and the sad thing about it is, it's from me. Because I didn't get anybody to actually give me a biblical quote or joke last week. So, I need you. To give me a biblical joke or quote, please. Anyway, here goes. Okay, for the Bible quote today, I'm actually just going to read 1 Corinthians 13. That, that seems like a quote that kind of fits in for today about love. So here goes. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. That's how important love is. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love it does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no wrong record of wrongs. It, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put, away, put the way of the childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we see, shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know fully, even if I am fully known. And now, from these three remain faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Love is greater than anything else. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the biblical quote for today. Now, as I mentioned right before that quote, I didn't get anything last week, so I had to do it myself. So if you want to submit your own joke or quote, here's what you need to do. You need to either respond to this video on YouTube as a video response, or if you'd like me to just read it off for you, just either comment below in the comment section or contact me on the wizife.com website. So yo, this has been the Wizife show and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this. Be sure to share it with your friends by the way. Just you know, share the love. Anyway, we will see you next week. Have an awesome week. God bless you.